All righty. Well, let's dive straight into it. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar on Figured for Sheep and Beef Farmers. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Nick. I'm a part of the customer success team here at Figured. And what we're going to go through today is a bit of an overview in how the setup works for sheep and beef farmers, uh, a little bit on how to use Figured with your farmers as well, uh, and then some of the special reports that we have sitting there in Figured that you can augment with some of the special production data. So starting off, we're going to look at the setup that's sitting in zero. Then we're going to look at upstream versus downstream, so how you can use Figured and how you can get your clients to use Figured in order to simplify your own workload. Then we're going to go through creating a tracker and we're going to map that on up. Uh, we'll touch on stock valuations too. Then we'll look at building a budget specifically for livestock. Then some of the reports and we'll talk about the enablement that Figured can offer you as well. So let's dive straight into it. Upstream versus downstream. There are two ways to use Figured. Downstream is where you take the dollar amount that's in zero and then you add a stock class and a quantity that's in Figured. Now that works really well for end of year reporting. Uh, however, if you want to be using Figured more regularly, I really recommend doing it upstream, which is where you record the sale or the purchase in Figured first, and then we post it through to, to zero. So the question really is, are you using Figured regularly or are you using it more at the end of the year? If it's at the end of the year, Downstream works really well. You're just reconciling those, those quantities and stock classes. But then if you want to use it regularly, um, upstream works a lot better. It's a lot easier too. And most farmers find it easier to enter those invoices directly into Figured, which we then post through to zero. So that means that the farmers have a role to play that's sitting in Figured. Uh, the accountants then have a role sitting in zero, doing all the reconciliation. And generally we find that people find this easiest if they're using Figured at least as regularly as their GST period. So at least generally every two months. Uh, I was talking to a Figured partner this morning as well, and she mentioned that she gets her farmers to use Figured generally every two weeks at the most, so that they can uh, have all of their up-to-date stock movements sitting in Figured. It then gets posted through to zero, and then they can look after the zero side of things. So we're going to be focusing today on that upstream view of using Figured, uh, but just so you know, there are two ways to do it. So Figured and zero. Like we mentioned before, Figured is all around adding the production to your finances. We provide a chart of accounts that you can modify. So we have an agri-specific chart of accounts that will work with zero to generate. Uh, you can download that and I'll show you where to grab that and then modify that for your chart of accounts for your client. And these are the accounts that you're going to be mapping to a tracker. This webinar is going to be really tracker focused. Uh, the types of accounts we're looking for are direct costs for purchases and revenue accounts for sales. So if the account isn't set up as a direct cost in, in uh, zero, it won't come through to Figured for you to map. It needs to be a direct cost, and the same goes for sales. If you're using our standard chart of accounts, which we recommend using, it'll already have those types set up. Then we're gonna go through creating a tracker, and trackers are where we hold all of the information about production. It really depends on how your zero file is set up though, which is why I recommend that you set your zero up first, then set up your figure file. It depends on how you wanna have it set up. There are two ways to do mappings. One of them is called a single sale and purchase account, which means that you'll have a generic account for all beef cattle purchases or all beef cattle sales, uh, or you can have individual sale and purchase accounts. The former, the single sale and, uh, accounts, are more common with smaller farms and they're more common in places like Australia, whereas the individual sale and purchase accounts are really common in New Zealand where we have a lot of detail around stock classes because of the way that valuations work in our market. Um, we're going to be setting up with a single sale and purchase account just for the ease of a, of a quick demo. However, uh, the chart of accounts that we do provide, it is set up for individual sale and purchase accounts. And that means that we've got uh, beef, uh, well, let's call it MA cows sales and MA cow purchases down and down and down through each of the different stock classes. On the note of those stock classes too, they're standardized and figured, which means that it makes it easier for valuations to work uh, because we can tie them all into the different groupings that are required, uh, especially for New Zealand. We have that standardized stock class, um, which should make it really easy for you to set up for your clients and keep a bit of standardization across your clients too. 
Then we have our stock valuations, which will use all of the actual data that you're entering into the tracker. So stock valuations, of course, aren't really used for budgets or forecasts. We have another webinar on that three-step end of year process, which I really recommend checking out if you haven't already. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, but generally those valuations are linked to the quantities and the stock classes that you're using. So of course it's important to make sure that that zero file has been set up and then the track has been set up right. So that when you do enter data into Figit and it flows through to zero, that it's all set up properly for you. We can actually do two types of valuations. One of them is those year end tax valuations. But we also do a thing called management valuations, which is for putting things like the market value of your livestock uh, onto your on-hand accounts in zero. Uh, we use that in the management valuations tool and I'll quickly touch on that and we're going to have another webinar on that one as well which will be uploaded to our YouTube channel when it's out. Now I just want to jump straight into a worked example. I think this is the best way to learn about how, the, how to do uh, sheep and beef farming in Figured, particularly focus on that setup. So let's dive straight into it. The first thing I want to show you guys is where to find the chart of accounts that we've, we've generated. So if you go to the help center in Figured, and you can reach that by going to the green chat bubble on the bottom right hand corner of any page. If you click on that, that'll then take you through to our chat center. But if you search down here, you can type in chart of accounts and that'll take you through to our help center article for it. Once you open that up, we have uh, a chart of accounts for New Zealand and Australia. You can download that as a CSV, make the modifications you need to, and then bring that into your client. Um, and when we're importing that, that's just going to go through to your zero chart of accounts. And if we look up here, for example, so search up sheep, you'll see that this particular one has been set up perfectly. We have our purchases and our sales accounts. We have our sheep on hand account. Uh, we've actually got two of them. Probably one of them is, is a bit older, um, but that's for our current asset, the livestock on hand. Then we have our non-cash movement account, which is for our valuations. And then the last one is the livestock revaluation reserve, another important one for valuations. So we've got to make sure that that zero side of things is set up properly. Once that's been done, it'll flow through to figured correctly. Now I'm going to bring in my farm that I've already created here called Resilient Oasis. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the operations and the trackers that we have set up. These are those production trackers. And then we're going to quickly make a sheep tracker as well. So right now I've already got a beef cattle tracker and I've already got a wool tracker set up already. So let's go ahead and create a new one up on the top here. I'm going to go down and here's my list of all of the different type of production trackers that Figured supports, but we're going to use sheep for this one here, New Zealand sheep. And once we're in here, we have the option to give it a name. So I'm going to call it sheep tracker. And then the type of accounts that we have set up. So like we saw earlier in Zero, we just have a sheep purchases account and a sheep sales account. So we're only going to have those single sale and purchase accounts. However, uh, when you set it up, you may have individual ones using those chart of accounts that we provided earlier. So this is an important thing to make sure you get right as well. We'll just use the drop down to spot between the two options. So let's go ahead and save the sheep tracker now. That'll then... Um, create it for us. It'll take a, a few ticks to generate. And once it's there, the very first thing we want to do is manage the enabled stock classes. Figured has a lot of extra stock classes that your farms may not necessarily use. So let's go ahead, manage those, and then get rid of some of the extra ones. So for this one, I'm just going to use the most common stock classes used in New Zealand. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck all of these and then enable the ones that I want to use. So I've got all of these guys down here. However, you may want to use extra stock classes. It depends on your business and on your client's business. So you may want to enable some of the ones down at the bottom here. So let's go ahead, save that up. Now that we've done that, uh, we will map our accounts. And you can see here, we've pulled through those, the chart of accounts from zero. So there's my purchases for sheep. There's my sales for sheep. And then I'm going to enter in my conversion quantities. So that's the opening stock for my tracker. So beforehand, um, this is, is, this is generally the conversion year that you want to do it for. So I'm going to say that for the opening of 2017, um, we're going to pop in a quantity in here and then save that up. So save changes and then that's going to create the tracker for us. Nice and simple. Uh, if you've been working with our enablement team as well, uh, you'll generally come into a figured file with this already set up for you. So you'll already have the comparative data in there from the previous year, and then you'll just jump straight in and, and work on this year. 
Straight away, we can see here that we have some inconsistent balances between figured and zero. So this means that I've already got a balance sitting there in zero that I haven't reconciled in figured, and that's okay. That's for when you're working downstream. But for this example, I just want to show you guys what it's like working upstream and adding those sales from figured and then posting them through to zero. So let's do that as a quick example now. Um, let's say that you're jumping straight into a file that's already been set up and you've given this to your client and now they're going in, say, every two weeks, every two months, or more regularly than that, whatever works best for their business. We'll go in and add an actual right up at the top here and record an actual sale. So let's go in and do that, and then that's going to give you the choice here for a few different things for that transaction. And it's going to give you things like the sale date and the, the default payment date that's associated with that. So whatever date we enter in here, it, it'll default to today's date, of course, but then we can jump back and we can set this to whatever financial year we're working in. Um, same with those payment dates, and then same with those contacts sitting there as well. So these contacts have come through from zero. If you're finding that there's a contact that you're missing, the first place to go is to jump into zero, and then uh, add in the contact in there, and then you'll be able to um, sync that through to figured, and then you'll have that as a choice. Make sure that post to zero is ticked here as well. That's a really important thing. If you don't have that ticked, then of course it won't flow through. Then we're gonna go in and choose our stock class that's associated with this. Um, let's say it's mixed age use. We can pop in a quantity, and then we can even put in things like weights. So if you have that information available, it's really handy to put in things like the average weights because you can now run certain reports and figure with those as one of your KPIs. And again, with the quantity, and then save transaction. And as soon as you save that transaction, it'll post it through to zero for you. Um, or we can make this a multi-line transaction, which is quite common too. So we could say add another stock class, or we can add a non-stock line, which would be for things like um, premiums or discounts. So you can select another account that's on here and then um, record that description and the dollar amount there. And then that'll all sit on the same invoice or the same spend or receive money transaction. Once we save that, we're all done and that'll post it through to zero. So that's a really quick way for your clients to go in and do a lot of the work for you. Get those transactions sitting in zero so that uh, as an accountant or as a bookkeeper, you can go in and just do the reconciliation as you need to. So now that we've looked at the actuals, I also wanna show you guys building out a budget. And the budget is something that you can get the farmer to do as well because they know their business really well. They know the quantities that they're expecting to move. And the first thing to work in the budget we need to do is go to our year and, chain, and, and using the date selector up at the top of the page, changing it from actuals plus forecast or actuals down to budget. Now remember this budgeting is occurring in financial pharma subscriptions, not in figured light. So if they're in figured light, you'll need to upgrade them. So we can go ahead and change it up to the budget. And for this one here, uh, we can already see that my budget's been locked down, but then we would be able to go in and make some changes. So let's jump ahead a few years. So when we're in the right year, we can go in and select our budget settings up at the top right hand corner here. And this is where we enter in our opening quantities for livestock. A really quick way to build this out is just to use last year's actuals and forecasts. When you click through to that, that'll then open it up and, and pull through the current closing balance based on actuals up to today and forecasts for remaining. Then we can go in and, and put in different quantities if we want to have that in there too, and then save that. And that gives us our opening quantity for the budget. But that's not the only way that we can do budgeting for livestock. We can also use last year's actuals and we can pull through the transactions that we had been recording throughout last year and use that as our base. Then we're going to use the reforecaster tool, which is like a tally sheet for quickly building out those budgets. So, so far we've been really focused on entering in data. We've looked at entering in actuals and now we're looking at building out a budget. But with the reforecaster, it's a really quick way to put in those dates, the stock classes, the quantities and the weights and things associated with those transactions in order to make the budget nice and detailed so you can get some really good reports out of Figured. We're focusing on budgeting now. So let's go back into Figured and take a look, at, a look at our tracker here. So opening's all done. If we wanted to grab last year's actuals and put them into this year's budget, we can do that by going to Tools, Export, and then taking the file that we export and then importing it into this year's budget. But instead, I'm gonna use the Reforecaster tool because I think that's probably one of the easiest ways for someone to jump in and build out a livestock budget. We're going to Reforecaster, and then we have our tally sheet style look here where we can open up, say, sales of one particular stock class and then enter in where we expect those movements to be each month. So we could say record the sale of 50, 
if you have if you want to estimate the weights, you can do that here, or you can skip that if you want to. It's up to you. And of course, uh, with sheep and beef, there is a difference between live and carcass weights. So there is a default dress out percentage which we can go into. Um, that's also available through our help center. There's a guide on how that works and how you can modify those percentages. Then we can put in our dollar amounts per head. So let's put in say 140. And that's where we're gonna build out our budget, just by going through to each different stock class, putting in the movements that we expect to see, uh, especially for those sales and purchases, and then putting in as much detail as we have available. And that'll give you some really valuable reports out of figure two. So now that we've gone in and used that re forecasting, and we can do that for sheep, we can do that for beef, um, and don't forget auto age your opening stock. Great way to push everything up to the next stock class, of course, because uh, especially in New Zealand, we're very age focused for our valuations. Uh, once you've gone ahead and done all that. So we have some really detailed production reports that are focused on those weights or the stock units or just the quantities that are in there as well. And there's a neat tool you can use uh, with each report called additional options where you can bring in some of those quantities associated with the sales and purchases and bring them into places like your cash flow report or your P&L. Then we have things like the production report, which can give you uh, breakdowns based on certain KPIs. And if your firm is using benchmarking too, you can bring your farms into benchmarking pools or run reports based on those pools uh, using sheep and beef specific KPIs. So there's a lot of detail in here and a lot of really neat reports that we can use. So again, let's dive straight into it and take a look at how that works and figure. We're gonna go through to reports here and take a look at some of the different management reports we have set up. So. Uh, the first thing I want to show you guys actually is the cash flow report. And I think this is a really neat way to generate some unique data for your client. So if we change our year back to the one that we were working in, which was 2017, let's look and looking at, at actuals as well. Using additional options in here, if you've been entering in information down uh, upstream, so recording it from figured posting through to zero, we can show quantities associated here. And when we run that, that's going to bring in an extra line to our different stock trackers. And you'll see here, for example, under beef cattle, we have our sale dollar amount. And then that's showing us the quantity that's associated with that too. Same thing again, sale amount, quantity. If you've already got data sitting in zero, you can add in what those transactions should be in figured as well, just by not ticking the post to zero button. Uh, and you can see here, we've got some that we haven't gone through and coded. But if you've been entering it in throughout the year, it's a really great way to, to add in some special information for your clients. When you share this report and either save it as a report that you email out or download as a, as a CSV if you want to have a copy of it to manipulate or copy it to clipboard to paste into something like a zero report pack, you've now got a really unique report that you can show to your clients. That doesn't just have to be on the cash flow report, of course, you can bring it into your other ones too. Same thing again, we can bring in those quantities and bring the production into your financial reports. That's just with our regular uh, financial reports though. If we go back, we can take a look at things like our production report, which will take uh, a lot of our operating expenses and break it down on a KPI basis. So when we run that here, we can either run it for all trackers or we can run it for particular trackers. And then that can show us things uh, either on uh, production per kilogram, if you've been entering it in per kilo, or based on things like effective hectares, uh, if you've been entering that in as well. Or we can bring in those stock units again as well. And when you've brought in the stock units there, you'll then be able to run your report like that too. So a lot of this is based on the information that you've been entering it in. If you've been like me and you've just quickly put it in, of course, you're going to get a couple of funny figures. Uh, but when you've been entering this in using real data, this report will really come to life. And you'll be able to see things like your sales per hectare or... We can look at things like your operating expenses, your animal health per stock unit. Now, these different categories you're seeing here are done through account configuration and figured. And this is one of the things that you do during the setup of a file too. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, you can search in our help center here under account configuration, and you'll be able to find the article that gives you a guide on how to do your account configuration and categorize certain accounts uh, to different categories. So these production reports, this is one of the things that I really like to be able to show off. You've got something really unique here. Uh, again, save it, uh, and that'll give you a, a web copy that you can email out, export it, download it as a CSV, or paste it straight into something like a zero report pack. And again, th that formatting will come through automatically too. Then when we look at our reports again, 
We can look at things like our production calculations or some of the tracker reports here are really valuable as well. Things like the tracker summary uh, or the tracker transactions. I see a lot of sheep and beef farmers using these in order to understand the stock movements and to bring in uh, things like weights into their reports too. So here's an example of our actuals showing us a summary of all of the sales, something really unique here. And then we get a, a, a stock balance styled view as well uh, to give you a, a top down perspective of all of your movements. So I recommend looking at those production reports, looking at the tracker reports in there as well. And then looking at those financial reports, specifically how you can use those additional options to bring in stock quantities and stock movements into the reports to really make them come alive with a production focus. So there's our production reports that are sitting in Figured. And if you had a benchmark pool set up, then you'd be able to run it by that pool. We do have another webinar on our YouTube channel around how to create benchmark pools. And if you're interested to learn more about that, feel free to reach out to our customer success team and we can take you through what that process is like and then get it enabled for your practice. Then the last thing I want to touch on here is the enablement sitting within Figured. So when you're bringing clients on board to Figured, we have resources to make that easier for you. We can enter in things like comparative data uh, so that when you jump straight in, you've already got a year's worth of data sitting in Figured so that when you run your report showing last year's data, you've, you've got a bit of info in there. Uh, that's something that's available to uh, accounting practices who are bringing 10 or more clients on board. And if you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to reach out to our team using the chat bubble in the bottom right hand corner of every page. That green chat bubble is where our support team is based. You can start a live conversation with our team. And as you see, we have a reply time that's generally under five minutes, which is really fast. Or you can see our help docs in there too. Uh, and that's where we do all of our support. So if there's something that we can't answer over text, pop through your phone number two and we can always give you a call to explain things too. But hey, that wraps up today's webinar for Figured for Sheep and Beef Farmers. Thank you very much for your, all your time. I hope there was something in there that you found useful uh, and we'll just wrap that up now.